Prologue Ringside in San Remo, Milan, 1996 WBC World Super Middleweight Title Fight Crouched down in the challenger's red corner, I watched the action intently as the ever fiercer left hooks of Runcorn's Robin Reed continued to swing and connect with the Italian champion, the redoubtable Vincenzo Nardiello. Whenever Reed made an impression, I noted that he immediately skipped away from the champion's flailing retort and evaded the shot. I watched his trainer, Brian Hughes, who himself watched the proceedings with a silent intensity that enthralled me. I'd read about the state of flow, defined by the wonderfully named psychologist Mihaly Sixcent Mihaly, as the place where mind and body work in harmony to produce their optimum performance and I watched him completely in sync with the action, anticipating events seconds before they happened. His game plan, prepared after hour upon endless hour in front of video footage, and then repeated in the dusty old gym where he had presided for my whole life, had now taken its physical form, and he watched the fight for any slight insights where he could tinker and adapt. Ten seconds, I offered. This was the signal for the corner to become the boxing equivalent of a Formula One pit crew. Busily applying fluids, respite, direction and advice in their minute-long intervention. My voice was loud enough to rise above the raucous Milanese crowd, urging their hometown hero to victory. But I was mindful of the mantra which had been drilled into me over the years. Keep your voice calm and your body language still during the fight. You need to present an image of complete control because it can panic the fighter. Brian Hughes had been learning his craft as master coach since he was a boy, and these insights always came packed with common sense, hewn from years of experience. Listening to his wisdom, presented with a mix of gruffness and enthusiasm, delivered in the kind of accent and phraseology that seems to have stepped straight from the pages of an Alan Bennett script, is one of life's pleasures, was how the Daily Telegraph once described his instruction. I played through the different instructions he could offer to Reed, who was coming back to the corner and gulping oxygen into his lungs. There were only 60 seconds to deliver the message, so it needed to be concise. Reed could be instructed to increase the pace of the fight, trusting his superior conditioning to take effect in the later rounds. He could receive a torrent of encouragement for executing the plan so diligently. How about a warning not to get complacent? The easiest option would be to remind him to keep on doing what he was doing. Why rock the boat? Why disrupt a winning plan? I moved closer to listen to the instructions, delivered in just five words. Sit down when you punch. Sit down when you punch. I know exactly what he meant because of the simplicity and the clear image in my head which it evoked. The plan had been to throw punches while the legs identified their escape route. Sitting down was a change of plan. It meant stillness as opposed to speed. He had seen that the punches were hurting, but that his fighter was preparing to move away as the punches landed, reducing the power each punch contained. The instruction to sit down suggested that Rather than look to move, Reed should plant both feet, increasing the leverage and the associated power of a punch, as Hughes had seen that Vincenzo Nardiello's resistance was falling fast. Most importantly, Reed understood it too. He nodded his understanding, stood up, adjusted his shorts, punched his gloves together to indicate his readiness to continue, and stepped back into the centre of the ring's canvas for the seventh round of the WBC World Super Middleweight title fight, the most prestigious of the alphabet titles, which confusingly littered the sport. Two minutes and 59 seconds later, I scrambled into the ring to celebrate a victory for Reed and Brian Hughes, my dad, who had become the first Manchester man in 50 years to train a world champion.